It's a warm welcome to viewers as we meet on this week's episode of Crime Watch, brought to you by your police service, the Zimbabwe Republic Police, to inform you of our roles and operations. I'm your host, Tendeke Dandarasi. It's good to have you along. The public should take note of the COVID-19 National Lockdown Level 2 extension as pronounced by His Excellency, President Emerson Dambuzum Nangagwa, on the 7th of September 2021. In this regard, the ZRP is calling for the public for collective responsibility in fighting COVID-19 pandemic. Moving on, the Criminal Investigations Department Womisai Darare arrested some notorious armed robbers who were terrorizing people across the country, mainly along the highways. Let us hear more from Detective Chief Inspector Jachi. Recently, we started to receive an upsurge in cases of armed robberies which are occurring in highway roads. In the first instance, the complainant was driving along Harare Mutari Road when he had a breakdown just uh, before my book flyover. And he phoned his friend so that he could bring him fuel because he had run out of fuel. At that time, he was approached by the accused persons who were two in number and they were armed with marches and axes. They demanded property from him and unfortunately the complainant did not uh, resist and they took from him a, a star pistol and uh, his cell phone. They went on to, to, to commit further uh, uh, robberies along the, the Arare Mutar Road. And in one of the instances, the accused persons uh, also approached one complainant who also had a breakdown and also had called his friend for refueling. Unfortunately, before the help arrived, the accused persons now armed with the a firearm which they robbed from the previous complainant, approached this complainant and they threatened to shoot him, demanding his property. When the complainant's friend finally arrived, he noticed that his friend was under attack. And then he, when he tried to drive off, he was shot dead by the accused person. Some of the people who are tagged in such circumstances narrated their ordeal. Names were 16, 16 September. Tagab, Munum Town. Tashi Gabma of Gutenov. Ipa bought the driver, Panimota, I got tried over tea. Why did you give Angus Law of Venom Bell Pen, Fair Farid, Longo Docum, Longo Batamas Cindy? The Batam was the ones they married, but what ones are so Tora Mari, Buffalo, the Magrosaris, is so I got to get any food. I stood also ten hours the therapy because of Shams Catum was going to get a Zagabat. Toso Yambira, oh, a Manisha Mar, but even go farm and go at the Chiripo, Kakango Nak. On the 5th of September, we had an accident. While the other colleagues were trying to, to get assistance, get police to come and attend the scene, uh, there was a time when I was left alone uh, at the scene of the accident, I think for about six minutes. And uh, during that short period, I was approached by two gentlemen, and uh, one of them uh, hit me on the forehead with the back or the butt of a gun and uh, I started ble bleeding heavily and uh, the other one was searching for items in my pockets and they found uh, my two phones and uh, they then took the cars, the car keys, opened the car, they took uh, laptops and uh, some valuables in the car. Uh, I thought uh, that was it but uh, the police did a sterling job quite grateful. I might not recover every item that I lost, but the fact that uh, these perpetrators are behind the bar, it's, uh, it's, it's good enough for me. We had an unfortunate incident that happened uh, along Mutawi Road on 18 September. 18 September. So our car developed a problem on the highway, so we parked by the side of the road. About 20 minutes after we had parked, they came three men by the side of the window and then they, they asked us to open the doors and then one of them lifted up a shirt and pangabani put agabudisa put here agati nongedzera agati frame doors then that's when we opened the doors one of them agaisa put here pane brother yangu and then the other one, Nagandi Sabang. And then they managed to get away with three cell phones, 
one wallet and some cash. Um, so after the incident happened, we managed to get to the nearest police station where they took down our statements. On Wednesday morning, we got a call saying that we should come to Central Police Station. Um, they asked us to identify all stolen properties and I managed to recover one of my cell phones and the police have done a great job by apprehending the thieves because it took only three days to apprehend them. So we really thank the police. After analyzing the crime trains, we then deployed our crack teams to make follow-ups on these accused persons. Through investigations, our crack teams received information that uh, one of the accused persons by the name Darlington Maruba was involved in these armed robberies. The crack teams and dog section led an ambush at the accused residence in Ziko. The accused finally arrived at about 1 a.m. And upon noticing the presence of the detectives at his house, he took to his heels. The dogs tracked the accused person and we managed to arrest him. We interviewed this accused person and he implicated his three accomplices. From Zico, the accused person led the detectives to Epworth. When the detectives arrived, they ordered him to come out. But instead, the accused person who was staying in this rented uh, room fired through this window, which you can see that is broken, towards the detectives. And then he bolted through the other door. And fortunately, the dogs were deployed on the other side of the house, and he was apprehended. In previous episodes, we've always been encouraging members of the public, especially landlords, to know who they are staying with to know who their neighbors are. In this case, the owner of this house did not know that she was housing criminals who were terrorizing members of the public in Greater Rat. We once again encourage members of the public, employers, to take your employees to a police station for vetting, or even your housemates, your domestic workers, so that they are vetted before you stay with them. The service is free. In an Indian Murizio, Pamusha Pan, Dagatambiro, Mbafa, it's in this Nagusi, or Guti, or Comana, or Imbafa, and Smevach and Dragashika, and Truchago, Imbape Kugar, the Kafung Zero, and Dawana, or Muno, Gars and Anaya Shaganaka, and Sinekupet Zira and Dakazo, and a footed Zo, Torida Pam, and Dakasons, Wakuti, Imbafa, Saka and Dinokuru Zira, Muria, Zimbabwe, Kuti, Tizive, Kuti, and Apachinka, Shiko, Muno, Osangana Sons, we see Sajirina, and Kuti Unga, Shimuti, and Tipo, Chitupachako, we are Shakan, Achinka, and Tipo, Chitupachak, and Nukasaka. Police, which is to go so garone munishas or munu shanda shagadin munaka mira se these criminals also pounced on an unsuspecting family in Arare. The complainant narrated his painful experience in the hands of these messless criminals. The guns were no gate. Chimbo for a gate, the one or not at Tango Pindam gate, which in money is a pindam gate, Shanzi Trima Purisa, Sakai Papo Agaba, Queen Ayem Bibai. Pistol Medical Center, Warren Park, one. On that note, we take a short break. Join us shortly.
Welcome to the second segment of Crime Watch. On a sad note, a 77-year-old man from Sadza village was burnt to death. Let us hear more from Marondera police. Police in Mashonaland and East province are worried about the increase of wildfire cases, which are causing destruction of property and loss of lives. Recently, we had a sad incident in which a 77-year-old man from Sadza was allegedly a band beyond recognition by revealed fire. The fire is believed to have been caused by another villager who was about two kilometers away from the scene and was trying to clear his graveyard. We are appealing to members of the public to follow fire preventive measures such as construction of fire guards and also forming some firefighting committees. Uh, as Emma, we are really worried about the increase in failed fire incidences and hectares lost to failed fires. People are a bit negligent and we are urging them to follow the law. What does the law say? If we go to SI7 of 2007, section 15, uh, subsection 1 to 3, it, the section clearly states that it's not allowed to start a fire outside the residential or commercial premises after the 31st of July each year. And also, uh, people are not allowed to start fires which they cannot extinguish. Uh, we are saying veiled fires, they destroy life, they destroy uh, crops, they destroy property. So we are urging people to really uh, to, to be very restrained when it comes to use of fire during the fire season. Meanwhile, Blawayo police gives us circumstances surrounding the arrest of three people for a murder case. CID homicide Blawayo arrested three accused persons for murder, which occurred in Hope Found in village number three on the 25th of September 2021. The accused persons were drinking beer at the photo store with the now deceased Fidel Jovo, aged 23 years. The three accused persons had a long-standing family dispute with the, the now deceased Fidel Jovo. The dispute degenerated into a fight which led the accused person, namely Brandon Moyo, to withdraw a knife which he used to stab the now deceased ones on the chest while you see the other two accused persons were holding down the now deceased. The report was made to the police leading to homicide detectives being invited at the scene. Follow-ups were made by the detectives leading to the arrest of the three accused persons who have since made their indications at the scene and led to the recovery of an OCAP knife which they used as their murder weapon. As said, you only said, we urge members of the public not to resort to violence in solving their disputes, but to solve their disputes amicably. Moving to Bait Bridge in Matebelel in South Province, police accounted for three people who were found in possession of firearms without certificates. The three are um, Mnyara age 27, a taxi driver in Messina, South Africa, Elfas Chigudugudze, age 24, of Chigudugudze village, Chief Makumbe Buhera, and Tafara Moy, age 30, of Mashawa village, Chief Mate Gwanda. This was after they illegally crossed the border from South Africa. Police officers on patrol deployed on Operation No to Cross Border Crime approached the trio and upon searching, they found two unregistered firearms, which are one Beretta Gadon pistol, serial number 3181E, and its magazine filled with 3 by 9 mm live rounds, a vector CPI pistol with an empty magazine. Investigations are in progress. Five people perished in a road traffic accident, which occurred on the 26th of September 2021, at the 366 kilometer peg along Arare Blawayo Road, near Combo area Fort Rickson. 
the driver of a Mitsubishi minibus who was traveling towards Blawayo with four passengers on board encroached into the lane of the oncoming traffic, resulting in a collision with a Nissan UD truck. The bodies were taken to United Blawayo Hospital. Four bodies have already been identified and one body is yet to be identified. On this week's road safety issues, let us join Mr. Ernest Muchena of the Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe. Viewers should take note that the legal age for driving a Class 4 motor vehicle is 16 years. A person must also have attained the age of 16 years in order to get a Class 3 driver's license and be able to drive motorcycles. Class 2 vehicles are driven by people who have attained the age of 18 years. In order to drive a public service vehicle, which is in the class one category of omnibuses, one should have attained the age of 25. The Traffic Safety Council would like to appeal to all parents who are in the habit of allowing children who are underage to drive vehicles to stop that behavior forthwith. The Traffic Safety Council is joining hands with the Zimbabwe Republic Police to ensure that such notoriety comes to an end. We would also take this opportunity to appeal to heads of schools and teachers who are in local parentis when children come to school to ensure that all the children, especially in high schools, who are driving to school are in possession of a valid Zimbabwean driver's license. They can also contact the Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe to check on the authenticity of the license that is being used by pupils at their school. When a child has attained their 16th birthday, they are now eligible to go and apply for a provisional driver's license and then be able to drive under the supervision of a licensed driver. The Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe has got a facility where members of traffic safety clubs in different schools will be given free provisional driver's license tuition upon purchasing a highway code. We would also like to appeal to heads of institutions to make arrangements with the nearest Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe office so that children are taught provisional driver's license lessons at the school. We take a short break. Let's join Elliot Kuzai Ganyani in the third and final segment at the Harare Agricultural Show. It is the third segment of Crime Watch, and I must say thank you very much to Tendekai Dandarazi, who's anchoring the Crime Watch test tonight. Now, this past week, the Zimbabwe Agricultural Show rode into life at Arare Showgrounds, and it ran under the theme, Synergies for Economic Growth. Cooperate, collaborate, and complement. In the same realm, the Zimbabwe Republic Police also ran under the theme, ZRP, Policing for Peace, and Promoting Synergies for Economic Growth in Pursuit of Vision 2030. Now as Crime Watcher, we thought it very necessary to take you through the ZRP pavilion for an appreciation of how some of the police departments operate. Here we are on training and development where we are saying we are promoting synergies for growth through human resource capacitation. Uh, as the Zimbabwe Republic Police, we do realize that there is need for the human resource base to have skills, knowledge and attitudes that are required for that are necessary for effective policy. The Zimbabwe Republic Police Staff College is also affiliated to the Bindura University of Science and Technology as well as the University of Zimbabwe, where police officers also undertake degrees and further their education for efficient and effective, effective policy. CIT Drugs and Narcotics is a specialized section in the ZRP which specializes in cases of illicit drug trafficking and drug abuse. Which are commonly abused in Zimbabwe, namely cocaine, crystal meth, which is the drug of concern at the moment, DAGA, ecstasy, LSD, cough syrups which include broncle and histalix PP. There are also, there is also the abuse of skin lighteners, sex enhancing medicines, 
for the lodging products. As we say, the drugs and narcotics, we haven't just sat down, but we've also carried on different operations, raiding, arresting, and also carrying out counseling to those abusers. We have raided people who have been found in possession of data, just like we have here. This is a set, just one of the sex which we recovered from one of the drug dealers. And also, people are still cultivating DAGA without a license. It still remains an offense to be found cultivating DAGA without a license in Zimbabwe. You were talking about the information and communication technologies that we are using as Zimbabwe public police for the purposes of carrying out our day-to-day -day duty, which is policing. Firstly, we've got digital media platforms that we have in Zimbabwe public police that are very vital for the purposes of information dissemination and information sharing with the citizens of Zimbabwe. And also taking into consideration the current COVID-19 situation, whereby face-to-face -face interactions are discouraged. The, the, the Zimbabwe Republic Police saw it fit to embrace this assortment of digital media platforms to cater for the different tastes of our clients to make sure that those who prefer to use WhatsApp, they use WhatsApp to communicate with us. Those who prefer to use Twitter, they use Twitter to communicate with us. We do believe that you have been enlightened on how some police departments operate. Meanwhile, the Zimbabwe Republic Police family is on cloud nine after securing first place at the just-ended Zimbabwe Agricultural Show under the security services sector. The prize-giving ceremony was graced by His Excellency, the President, our comrade Dr. Emerson Dambuzo Munangagwa, on the 30th of September, 2021. The Commissioner General of Police, Tandabantu Godwin Matanga, received the floating trophy on behalf of the police. Thank you, Elliot, for taking us through what was happening at the Harare Agricultural Show. Before we come to the end of this week's episode, here are some of the people on the police wanted list. Isabel Shamuyarira, aged 50, of number 11449, called Comfort Arare, is wanted by Machipisa police for a case of fraud. Muzilikazi police in Blawayo is looking for Andrew Maseko, aged 27, of house number G63, Muzilikazi Blawayo, for murder. Lastly, Mashingorura is looking for Wellington Zimbaniete of Nago Village, Chief Zimuto Mashingo, for robbery. Anyone with information that may help in the location of these people can contact any nearest police station or contact us on the following details. Our National Complaints Desk number is 0242-703-631. Visit our website www.zrp.gov.zw. Email us on feedback at zrp.gov.zw. Alternatively, you can link with us on our Twitter handle, at Police Zimbabwe, or like us on our Facebook page, Zimbabwe Republic Police. Be reminded that all Crime Watch episodes are accessible on our YouTube channel, Zimbabwe Republic Police. We hope you found this program both entertaining and educative. We encourage you to continue supporting us in the fight against crime. From me, Tendeka Dandarazi, and the crew behind the scenes, pleasant viewing. Thank <laughs> you.